wanted life to attend the National Youth Science Camp. This young man is Tom Jones of Midland, Texas. Tom is on his way to West Virginia to become one of a hundred boys, two from each state in the Union, at the National Youth Science Camp, a major feature of West Virginia's centennial year celebration. Each of the 50 states selected two of its most outstanding science students for this honor. Science camp director of West Virginia University and many other dignitaries are on hand to give the boys a real West Virginia welcome as they arrive at Charleston's Kanawha Airport. The representatives from Ohio and Michigan are the first to arrive and begin their new adventure in the mountain state where the pioneer spirit still lives. The FMC Corporation played host to the boys, showing them firsthand many new items of military equipment produced at FMC's vast Ordnance Division plant at South Charleston. This vehicle is the famous M113 amphibious personnel carrier. The Union Carbide Chemicals Company also showed the boys a royal West Virginia welcome at Union Carbide's Technical Research Center in South Charleston. The Hospitality Committee arranged for tours of the research center, and each boy was presented with a briefcase and a slide rule as a remembrance of this visit to one of the most extensive and busy scientific research centers in the world. Amazing scientific progress is being made in West Virginia, and these budding young scientists were given the VIP treatment throughout their visits to Charleston area points of interest. The science camp itself, Camp Pocahontas, is located in the beautiful Monongahela National Forest in West Virginia. Here, against a skyline of mountains, far from city scenes, is a unique scientific and cultural opportunity for 100 boys from every state in the United States. The West Virginia Centennial National Youth Science Camp. A science camp is born. The boys begin their three weeks encampment with this traditional flag-raising ceremony, paying their respects to old glory. What better way is there to bind together the peoples of a 50-state nation than to bring together groups of citizens with a common interest? In this case, the love of science. These young men represent the top scientific talent of their generation, and the future of America may well lay in their hands. West Virginia's Governor William Wallace Barron, speaking at the dedication ceremony, said that the world lives at the threshold of a new era in science. Governor Barron said that West Virginia fully intends to be a participating and contributing partner to this new age of progress. Mr. Carl R. Sullivan, executive director of the West Virginia Centennial Commission, also greeted the boys. These 100 young men are gathered in West Virginia to dedicate themselves and this encampment to the ideals of scientific knowledge and achievement, and to enjoy three weeks which they will remember for the rest of their lives. They proudly unfurl flags of their home state. Many important guests add to the festivities of the dedication of the National Youth Science Camp. The Highlanders with oats and bagpipes bring the ceremonies to a colorful close. West Virginia cooks prepare delicious food for their 100 boarders. The boys gained a total of almost 400 pounds during the three weeks camp, an average of four pounds each. 
there was no difficulty in getting these fellows to come to New York. Monday, June 30th, 1963, just 10 days after West Virginia's 100th birthday, the regular camping period of the National Youth Science Camp got underway. The beautiful settings of Camp Pocahontas were thoroughly enjoyed and appreciated by the young men. 33 professional scientists talked on subjects ranging from archaeology to zoology. There were classroom sessions by observatory lecturers in stellar and interstellar matter, electronics, radio astronomy, the ionosphere, and life in space. Demonstrations were given on skeet shooting, conservation practices, and turkey catching. Arts and crafts had a distinctive appeal to these young men of science. Silk screen printing, enameling metals, leather tooling, and sketching were enjoyed by the boys. Many pieces of beautiful jewelry were sent home as gifts to friends and relatives, and many items were made as keepsakes to remind these boys of their three weeks in West Virginia. Eagerly awaited were the visits to the National Radio Astronomy Observatory at Greenbank, West Virginia. These boys were divided into 13 groups so that the sponsor of each group could give personal attention to each of the boys. As the boys approach the radio telescope itself, they begin to appreciate the immense size of this 300-foot dish. The sponsor had to keep on their toes to answer the questions asked by these young scientists. With cameras and autograph books in hand, the boys wait for the arrival of the famed astronaut Scott Carpenter, America's fourth man in space and second in orbit. The boys found Lieutenant Commander Carpenter to be a personable and likable fellow, quite modest about his own accomplishments. It was quite a treat to these boys to spend an evening around the campfire with astronaut Carpenter and listen to his discussion of his trip to outer space. He showed a genuine desire to share his knowledge with these young scientists, and the boys were greatly impressed. At any camp, one of the greatest pleasures is mail from home. The boys are always eager to turn out on time for mail call. At the National Youth Science Camp, education often took a more carefree course. Hiking, overnight camping trips, and cave exploring trips became a favorite pastime. but it always felt good to get back to camp. What could be more relaxing than fishing in the sparkling waters of the Greenbrier River and hoping to catch a centennial golden trout? Not every hour, even at a science camp, is spent in pursuit of science. Off time was generally spent in some form of play or vigorous sport. Competition was as keen on the athletic field as it was in the classroom.
train supervisors directed sports and field games and scheduled the many athletic events. Here, Dave Tork, former world champion pole vaulter, instructs the boys. to do that sometimes it was difficult to decide what to do. But games composed of teams from cabin occupants were especially interesting and filled with friendly rivalry. This ham radio station was set up in the library and was operated under Hawaiian call letters. The library was also the scene of relaxation, perhaps to catch up on reading or to write a letter home. Table tennis, shuffleboard, hootenannies, and talent shows were held in the recreation room. Not all the events at the National Youth Science Camp were limited to the camp boundaries. Several field trips were made. One of the highlights was a special trip to Washington, D.C. For many of the boys, this was the first visit to the nation's capital and they thoroughly enjoyed seeing, in person, the sights they had read about and seen in pictures all of their lives. For most Americans, this first glimpse of Washington is a momentous and inspiring occasion. A special luncheon held at the Senate office building gave the boys an opportunity to meet their own congressmen and senators. These men of high office seemed genuinely interested in all the activities of the National Youth Science Camp and were specially interested in the benefits of the camp to the young men and to the country. Arrangements for this exciting trip were made by West Virginia Senator Jennings Randolph and the Centennial Commission. President Kennedy's special assistant and advisor in science, Dr. Jerome Wiesner, extended personal greetings. NASA Administrator James C. Webb presented a stimulating luncheon address. Mr. Webb was presented a West Virginia Centennial Medallion by Mr. Sullivan. A visit to Goddard Space Flight Center at Greenbelt, Maryland was another highlight of an unforgettable day. The 100 young scientists approached the Space Flight Center with great excitement, and they were certainly not disappointed. They were treated to exhibits showing models of the communication and weather satellites which orbit the Earth. Teams of experts explained the workings of these satellites and the methods of tracking them through the reaches of space. Control mechanisms and computers are demonstrated.
a giant tracking system is able to trace and record the position of satellites anywhere in the vast reaches of outer space. better way to end a full day than with a song. The boys sang, I want to wake up in West Virginia where the rhododendron grows. Concord State College at Athens hosted the group overnight and presented a farewell banquet and graduation ceremony. The students of West Virginia State College at Institute were host to the 100 young scientists on the day that they were scheduled to leave West Virginia. The fellowship and enrichment given here will be a constant source of inspiration. Already, the Alumni Association is planning a reunion in this 35th state. The camp director guided a session of thanks and farewell remarks by the boys at West Virginia State Capitol Building in Charleston. The camper said, our image of West Virginia is one of respect and admiration. Everlasting friendships have been made and a year's learning has been done in three weeks. We learn from each other as well as from our instructors. Meeting young men from all over the nation has promoted better understanding and goodwill. As the boys prepared to depart for their home states, they could not help but reflect upon the events of the National Youth Science Camp and the better understanding of the world and the universe that they will take home with them. Yes, it is their hope that others in West Virginia youth science camps to come will have this same opportunity for enrichment each year during the next new century in West Virginia.